All right, guys, in this video, I'm gonna go over the systems for the Garmin system. So I'm doing the full IFR package. So I've got all Garmin, everything, and this is the left wing and this is the right wing. And what I thought I would do is make a video before I put the bottom skins on about where I decided to put everything. So it's a little bit different than the plans. I'm using some of the stuff from Vans and some of the stuff is my own. So um, let's start with the left wing because I think that was the hardest because that had the pedo too. So for reference, this is where the bell crank arm for the ailerons is. This is going to have an access panel here. So there'll be an access panel here. There'll be an access panel here. Um, so the next bay over is where I decided to put the stop bracket. I'm sorry, the pitot tube. Now the reason is, is because this bracket right here can attach nicely to the outside of this rib. And if I had put on the inside here, well, it wouldn't have been so easy to mount there. Plus I'd be in the same bay as the aileron, which probably isn't a problem, but just seems like an easy thing to do. So first thing I did was, well, once I decided where to put this, um, we started by drilling these three holes and um, then mounted it with Clecos. Then I put the bracket in, then eventually put the skin in. Um, once it goes in, you'll notice that these lines are gonna be too long. So I trimmed a little bit off of those. I uh, just sort of bent them so that they would fit nicely into a 90 degree elbow here. So those are two fittings that go on the end there. I haven't actually spinaled these. Um, and then for the power source, I'm using these little shaking hands. And the reason I'm using those is so I can, if I ever need to remove this, I can disconnect those, disconnect those, disconnect those. And even though I won't be able to get to this, I'll be able to get to here. And um, that could come out conceivably. Okay, so let's look at the other things that are here. So in both wings, you're gonna see a set of nav lights and a set of landing lights. These are all from the vans wiring harnesses. Um, I did do it a little bit differently. So Vans has you kind of jump over in the plans, they have you jump over to this area. But since I needed this for my GMU 11, I decided to keep that out. So I didn't follow the Vans instructions. I kept it in here. And what I did is I used a couple of Dell clamps to keep this definitely secured away from the aileron so there's no problem. So instead of moving over to this area, I left it across, which means I had to drill all these holes, which was no big deal. Um, and, you know, there's the landing light in there. And then this is where the GMU 11 is going to go. It's actually going to get mounted here. I'm not going to mount that until I get to um, the wingtips. And, but I do have the wiring harness already for the GMU 11. And that runs all the way through, nice clean shot out to here. And by the way, the pedo power does fit in with these two quarter inch tubes, these quarter inch plastic tubes and that two 12 gauge wires. I use 12 gauge wires. It probably could get away with 14, but um, it's about 12 and a half feet. So technically it should be 12 gauge wires. So I have those and I just twisted them I was gonna use a twisted pair, but let me just show you what a shielded twisted pair looks like. That's a shielded twisted pair, which is pretty pretty big and beefy. So that's a little ridiculous. So I'm not actually going to go with that. I've seen several builders that did it with just using a normal 12 gauge wires and twisting them. And the idea is that you're going to try to eliminate the interference of the GMU 11, which again is gonna sit out here. So um, the um, interference from here to here is about six feet. So we're definitely within the minimum distance of three feet. So should be good. And so that takes care of the left wing. Okay, so the, the right wing, we have the servo over here. So the GSA 28 is mounted here. Um, the stop bracket does rest over the flange there, so it's kind of strange, but 
it does say in the Garmin manual that that's, that's not flush, but you can go ahead and install it like that. So as much as it doesn't feel right, you can go ahead and do it. Um, this is the Vans template that puts it in neutral. So I haven't really adjusted, but there, I do get a full range of motion. Now this is stopping now because it's not connected to the ailerons, but it won't, it will not go that far once it's all connected. So, um, so the autopilot is here. The, um, the, the I, I ran the wiring harness for that through this bay and it does have a pitch trim, roll, I'm sorry, a roll trim servo um, attached to it, but I'm not going to install that. But in case you wanted to, you could install that as well, but I'm not going to install that. Um, the, the nav and the landing lights are the same. And I do have a VOR antenna here. I'm using the wingtip antenna, the Bob Archer one. So that's going to go in this wing here. So most everything else is in this side of the wing so that we got the VOR antenna, we got the servo, um, the only thing that we have in the left wing that could interfere with the GMU 11, aside from the, layout, the nav and the landing lights, is the um, pitot heat. But again, so this will this is only going to interfere when it's actually on. I do have it twisted. It is a significant distance away from where this is, so it should be in decent shape. Okay. So, anyways, now I think I'm ready to close my bottom skins and continue on with the rest of this journey. So here you have it.